What up players, it's Wallboss Tay up in this mode. Today we are taking a look at the Cave Squigs kit for Games Workshop's uh, Orcs and Goblins army for the Warhammer Fantasy Battle game. So they come in a little white box, looks like this. It says Cave Squigs on it, and uh, by Citadel Miniatures. And in it you get a single sprue of five Cave Squigs. And you also get five slotted 20 millimeter bases. So we're gonna take a look at it first. Fine cast. Uh, hopefully, there's not gonna be any fine cast shenanigans with air bubbles or mold lines. You could, you could see some mold lines here, 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 right down the middle for all of them pretty much, but no shifting. So it looks like the, the molds kind of cast decently. All right, so let's flip them out and see just how good or bad they really are. This is a appreciation video for my buddy Devil's Prodigy, who was a huge participant in the July Painting Challenge this year. He is a, a great guy, really, really supportive of my channel. And right now he's currently doing a campaign series with his orcs and goblins. He painted up some savage orcs, a um, bunch of other little projects for the for the uh, July painting challenge, and just a really, like I said, supportive, friendly guy. Um, good to know, good to to be in contact with. So I'm going to include all of his information so that you, if you can, please please go to his page after this video if you are not already subscribe to him and please subscribe to him um, okay so we clipped them out let's take let's take a look at them here's this first one really cartoony the thing I love about the squigs is they they're so cartoony they're just big like Kirby butterballs but with teeth and the expressions look at this guy's expression it's ridiculous all those teeth Here's one that's hopping. I love the hopping one. He's up on one leg. Now the great thing about fine cast, one of the things you can say is that it is lighter than metal. So the old models, these used to be in metal. The mold lines, although there wasn't as much flash, they used to have some pretty gnarly mold lines right down the middle of their bodies. And um, those were very difficult to clip. So with these, at least what you can say is that you know, it's relative. These guys are relatively light. You stick them on the base, and you put the base on the table. The uh, model will not fall down. One of the difficulties, especially with this model, this leaping guy, I think you have to shave the, the tab down a little bit. One of the problems with him, I remember, because I, I used to have a, a squig herd or two in one of my older orc and goblin armies, and I remember this model in particular with one leg up. He was always falling over and um, he, you would glue him in like this but then because of the weight of the model and because the the point of contact is only that one little claw there uh, it would start leaning over falling over even if you put it on the table if you tried to move it the whole thing would fall over because metal was so heavy the the metal model was so heavy that just the little bit of unbalancing would make it make the whole thing fall over. Uh, if you can, I would suggest getting the Squig Herder kit rather than just the, the Cave Squig pack because that actually comes with the musicians that you need for your unit. Uh, this pack is just a bunch of the Cave Squigs themselves, uh, five of them. All right, so, fine cast. Look at this, look at all these air bubbles. Fine cast. I mean, they're not the end of the world, but I mean, oh, look at this one right here under his lip. That one is pretty gnarly. That one's bad. And they have a set called the gnarly squigs too, but these are pretty gnarly. So, you know, they're lighter. You'll be able to game with them easier, but in the end, because they're basically just taking a metal sculpt and putting them through the fine cast machine. 
I, uh, I, I guess you're gonna have mistakes like this, so. Shaving down the flash there, their flash on the back. Um, the great thing about fine cast, uh, one of the positive things I should say, is there really any great thing about fine cast? One of the positive things about it is that because it's such a lightweight material, you can clean the mold lines pretty easily. With pewter, or the metal, um, you would have to really put in some elbow grease. It made it a lot easier to cut yourself when cleaning them. Uh, now it's a lot easier, but... And there's, there's these air bubbles and these f details in the flash that get mucked about a little bit. All right, so... We'll take a look at the, the rest of them, see if they're any better or any worse than that one. I see some minor air bubbles here, there, some more flash going right up the leg and down the back. Nothing too bad, oh no, look at that giant air bubble right in there. Looks like you're going to need liquid green stuff or plastic putty by Vallejo. Here's another hopping one, these aren't even near the uh, mold itself, but there's tiny air bubbles there. Flash. Oh, positive thing. I like these little veins that have been modeled onto him. It's pretty cool. You can paint those, highlight those up. Just their physiology looks so weird. Like, look at how cartoony these guys look. <laughs> this guy's ridiculous. With the tongue. bad these air bubbles are <sighs> you know for me I don't know look at those air bubbles it's we'll see how they paint up but I mean you know, it's funny to think that the sculptors put in these little air pockets right here because they thought it would add some definition and now they really have air bubbles you've got a nasty flash line right down the middle here I'm gonna try and Clean that off right now. See how easy that is. I'm just taking the back of my, of my hobby knife there, brushing his teeth up a little bit, giving him a little bit of dental hygiene. Yeah, a lot of people think the only way to clean these mold lines is to take the blade and just drive it down. But I only try to use try to use a blade really for to reach areas, especially with fine cast wear, just a little bit of, of elbow grease will give you the, the good effect. All right, I like how this one has these bumpy scales on the back. So, was I really expecting to be impressed? Not really, I knew that these were older models and um, I wasn't too sure how they would look, but Look at all the flash and all the, the molding and everything. You're going to have to glue these guys onto the bases and everything. So, uh, I don't know. Do I recommend getting it for an Orc and Goblin player? These guys definitely are a fun unit to use and they can be very effective. I've used them myself, like I said before, to great effect. Unfortunately, the fact that you have to deal with the raised cost of fine cast and the fact that you still only get five in five in a kit. I mean, when you think about the new Dark Elves that have just come out, um, it's, it's kind of a bummer that you couldn't get a set of them for like 10, a set of 10 for uh, for for a good price So no one's gonna be really hoarding these guys up in the game tactically as of uh, 8th edition you Cannot take a standard Or I don't think you can take a musician. I don't know. I could be wrong I, I don't have my orcs and goblins book right in front of me and the rules have changed so much over the years but and you've actually got these musicians that go with them, kind of prod them along. So you've got night goblin handlers that take take the squigs and kind of herd them around the field. But uh, if 
if all your night goblin handlers get killed, then you uh, they basically explode. They don't really explode. What happens is uh, the squigs run around, kill everything that they can, uh, bite everything they can get their teeth on, and then they run away with no handlers to uh, keep keep them going forward. So it's a fun, fluffy, ridiculous attack. But I've used it before. It's <laughs> Definitely not competitive because you can't count on it, but um, it's it's fun. So what are you gonna do? It's totally orky and gobliny, and sometimes that is all you need. Oh, look at look at these air bubbles! Look at that! Mm. Oh, my wallet! I need them because I was planning on increasing the size of my squig herd. So uh, Devil's Prodigy, don't think that I'm regretting purchasing these uh, to do your appreciation video. Uh, I definitely am not. I'm just <laughs> regretting the quality of, of this whole fine cast thing. Interesting how no, uh, there weren't any fine cast <sighs> releases with the new Dark Eldar, or Dark Elf release. I think that's good. I think they should get away, get away from fine cast. Kind of treat it like that one girl that you meet that you're not sure if you're really into, uh, but you know, she's always hanging around you and you're hanging around with her. You take her out sometimes, but at one point you're like, mm, this is not going to work. I don't think, I don't think this girl and I are going to really go anywhere. And meanwhile, she's making wedding plans and trying to get you to come over to her place for Thanksgiving so you can meet the folks. And, oh, that's, that's fine cast. That's my relationship with fine cast. Look at this hole. Look at this hole. Right. Ah. Do I want him? You know, you come to the point where you ask yourself, do I, do I want to, do I want to fill it in? Should I just leave it and make like it's bleeding fungus or leaking fungus? Like that's a, that's a sweat pour. <sighs> All right, whatever. You want to glue these guys with super glue. In America, Zappa Gap is really good. All right, so I was just planning on assembling these guys and wrapping up the video, but uh, I realized that some of them, like the ones like this guy here, needed a little bit of shaving on the front tab to get him to fit, so I thought I'd, I guess, go through all of them so that folks at home know which of these squigs needs special love and attention. Zap a gap. Put it on the tab or in the slot for the 20 millimeter base and just hold it for about 10 15 seconds. And a uh, zap zip kicker or zap kicker is also good. I heard. I, I, I've also heard you shouldn't do this, but sometimes when I get a, a basic match like that, I like to give it a little bit of super glue on the bottom. Not too much. Too much glue is actually really bad because it, um, it gets thick and clumpy and it interferes with itself. So it makes it harder to, to set when it's drying. All right, let's glue the other guy that's leaping up in the air. This fellow here, oh, look at this mold line. On the back of his head. Just gonna take the back of my knife, run it along this ridge here, get rid of all the awesome detail because I'm trying to get rid of this stupid mold line. Thank you, GW. I shouldn't say thank you, GW, I shouldn't say thank you, fine cast. Alright. Will he fit into his base? Nope. So 
again. I'm gonna have to shave off the squig word. So stay tuned because as a follow-up to my appreciation vid, I am going to be painting up these squigs. I was thinking first I'd make them all uniform, like red or uh, yellow. And then I thought, you know what? Squigs are like, no two of them look the same. So I decided what I'm going to do is paint them in a variety of different colors, like a bag of Skittles. Squigtles! <laughs> it was a bad pun, master. I know. I knew it as I said it, Igor. We are three for three. This is another tag you're gonna have to shave the word squig off of. It's this guy that looks like he's bounding forward. Um, the, the difficult thing with the old models, the metal ones, is once the tabs broke off of the rest of the squig's body, you had, pretty much you had to um, figure out how you were going to get it back onto the base. So people would do that by pinning, driving like a staple or a pin or a rod up through the leg. Uh, it was always rather difficult though, so these new fine cast ones, the great thing about the lightweight nature of them is that even if you do snap them off by accident, you can pretty easily just glue it back, uh, pin it, but it, it won't lean over, fall over like the old metal ones did. And four for four, I guess I'm just gonna say, for all of these squigs, you should shave off the word on the tab. So stay tuned, I'll do a, a variety of different color schemes and hopefully you'll find something that you like for your squigs. Oh look, this guy actually looks like he fits. Yep, this one actually fits with the tab. So you've got one guy, this one with the horns and the plates on it. The great thing about it is his foot is flat on the base, which means that you could put some glue there as well as onto the tab so that when it lines up it will sit very nicely onto the base. I'm going to use the back of my knife to just push the tab in, coax it in there, and there you have it. So. That is the unboxing of the cave squigs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, again, I'll put a link to Devil's Prodigy channel down below. So check him out and go and support him, subscribe to him. He's doing a lot of great fun stuff. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to see how I paint these guys up. Thanks for watching everybody.